Okay, guys, we are loaded up. Not sure if we can handle this load or not, <laughs> but it's three 18 foot, three solos. As you can see, they are very low profile and I'm tickled to death about it. They are light. I didn't tuck anything. Only got like two foot overhang. So good. I gotta flag it. Everything strapped down. It's going to uh, Sunrise, Arizona, which is the Phoenix area. So I'm getting paid for the three campers and it wasn't bad because, uh, like I said, didn't have to tuck anything, didn't have to take nothing off. So it's got it. But uh, we're going to get on the road here. Just wanted to show you guys what we had. Hey guys. I just want to say think long and hard before you decide to get into this business. So I went over this morning. You know, we had that problem in Arizona where the truck would start and it just started. And it has started every single time since then. I came home Friday. Sunday was my birthday, so I came home Friday. I got this load going to Arizona. So I came home Friday. I know it's out of the way, but I wanted to come home for my birthday weekend. Dropped the trailer, went home, shut the truck up. I, I've started the truck four times this weekend. Started it this morning. Just to make sure the batteries were charged and all that, because I turned my cooler on last night and let it cool down. Started this morning, went to a VA appointment, came back, restarted the truck, went over and got my trailer. The truck was already running, I done my pre-trip and everything. And I was like, eh, I'll check my oil when I stop and get fuel. I'm in Knoxville, one hour from my house. Pull up to the fuel island, shut the truck off, check everything. Go to start the truck back so I can check the transmission plug. And guess what? That was three hours ago. Three hours I was at the fuel island. Richard. Richard Elfrin, fellow Horizon driver now, uh, subscriber, lives in Knoxville, I reached out to him, he said he was home, came over gracefully, grace, gratefully, pulled me from the fuel island into a parking place. He suggested that he thought it was acting like the neutral safety switch in the transmission. So I called up Clark Power, who did the transmission down in Nashville, I called the one here in Knoxville, and uh, they contacted not, uh, the Nashville location. They're actually sending a tech out here to see if it's a transmission issue. And if it is, obviously they'll initiate warranty stuff and hopefully try to get it fixed. If it's not, then he's like, you know, you'll be responsible for it. And I'm like, what? I don't care. I mean, if you can get the dang thing fixed and get me back on the road, well, that's more important than five, six, eight hundred dollars or whatever it costs to fix it. I mean, but. But it sounds like it's that safety switch. Now that he brought that up, that makes perfect sense. And it didn't have to drop the pan to fix that. So, what shall I say? I'll keep you updated. But like I said, a million, million thanks to Richard for coming out and, and getting me off the fuel island. Uh, my dad was going to come down, but he was in Middlesbrough, Kentucky. He had to go home, get my truck, my Ford, and then come to Knoxville. So he's hours. He was, it was several hours still before he was going to be here. They still coming in case I got to have a ride home, but uh, yeah, Richard come and got me off the fuel island. I'm very grateful for that. But uh, hopefully we get back rolling and can get on toward Arizona tonight. If not, I guess getting an extended stay at home. Not that I want it, but I need to have these things delivered Friday because it's going to be Labor Day weekend. I'm sure they're not going to be open over the weekend or on uh, Monday. So we'll see. So uh, I'll keep you guys updated. Yeah. Okay, guys. So after. Uh over five and a half hours or so. Uh, a couple hours in, the Clark Power guy came out. We checked the transmission. There was no issues with the transmission, so it wasn't the uh, neutral safety switch or anything like that. So we went over everything, checked voltage. Uh, we tried to go power straight to the starter like I've done in the past. Nothing. Once again, he was dumbfounded as to why it wouldn't work. Uh, he ended up leaving. My dad showed up with my tried it again and it started turning over but at this time I mean obviously the batteries were weak because I've been trying for five and a half hours to start the truck 
and put the booster cables on it and it started up. Well, while I was doing that, the Clark Power guy came back and he's like, hey, I was talking to my buddy. That thing, we think it may be vapor locked. He asked if the fuel was turned up and I think it does have a tow tune on it. So I think the fuel is turned up. And both times it's done this, I've pulled straight in and turned it off like a dummy instead of letting it idle and letting the fuel burn off. So we think it's just vapor locking and then it's, and, and the uh, starter can't turn over. That or, you know, is it an issue with the ECM? I don't know. But I can promise you I ain't turning the freaking thing off until I get back home again. So, but we are on the road. Uh, hoping to make it to at least Memphis tonight to get down sometime. Driving later than I wanted to, which means I'm going to start later. It's just puts everything off. I'm just glad to be on the road, so I'll keep you guys in the loop. It's just 6.15. Uh, we still have... I'm going to watch TV while I hey, ate here. We still have two hours and 45 minutes of drive time left. Like I said, we're going to watch a little TV, making some tacos, and then we're going to finish out our drive time. So, get back with you guys. Good morning from Oklahoma. We're getting ready to uh, go in and tidy up, wash our face, get ready to start our day. We made it to, I think it's Hinton, Oklahoma. We stopped at the uh, Loves here and, you know, if I just had good luck finding truck stops or if, uh, I don't know, but uh, we got here at like 10 o'clock last night. We're, we're parked right here about half of these spots were open and then the second row over there about 75 percent of them was available that was at 10 o'clock last night so and there was no way for a shower at the left so we got us a shower last night and uh yeah we're uh, just gonna get our day started uh we'll make it in across texas and we'll probably probably have a few hours tomorrow when we start to get to uh, our delivery in Arizona, but I'm already on six of this patch looking, trying to figure out what we're going to uh, pick up tomorrow, so get on the road. I didn't know what this guy had beside me when I stopped last night, but still don't know what it is, but it was inhalation hazard and it's corrosive and whatever 1050 with the skull is hydrogen chloride and hydrous yeah, looks very dangerous so but uh yeah that's how our uh, day's been and Trip's been good other than when it started out there we couldn't get the truck started but I haven't shut it off except the other night when I was going to replace the fuse on the uh, CB because I blew it when I had the whole dash door apart and I pulled the wrong fuse and shut the truck off and it started back. So, well let's get in here and uh, get tidied up and get ready to get on the road and I'll get my feet done. Here in Arizona, it's like over 100 degrees already. It's nine o'clock in the morning, but uh, we got them unloaded. All three of them. All I done was I stayed in the same spot, rode one off, left the wobble wheel on, pushed it over out of the way. Second one off, pushed it over out of the way, and just dropped the third one in the middle. Now we're gonna put everything up. Still looking for a load out of here. Uh, so, not sure what we're gonna get. May have to go on into California to get something paying good, but we do have another load in Indiana waiting on us already. So let's get finished up here and get our 
paperwork done. Just get paid and get on the road. Hey guys. So we made it to uh, Flagstaff, Arizona. We stopped for the night. We've already showered. Um, I'll show you what we got on tomorrow. And we're picking up another one in Albuquerque. So what we're doing right now is uh, doing some IFTA. So we're adding our fuel receipts. So the first thing we did was take a picture. You can see down here, we've already took the picture. So then you go up here and you select what type, it says it's a fuel receipt. Uh, I don't ever put, I just put whatever date I entered. Then we gotta go here and put jurisdiction. So the one we're doing, the one we're doing is from New Mexico. So we gotta go down here and we find New Mexico. So that's the jurisdiction. Then we go down to fuel type, it's diesel, volume, was 65 gallon 65.218 gallons so 65.218 next is total cost 332.55 332.55 vendor name T A T A Location. See up there it says TA Morale 0229. So I always just put in the store number 0229 because if you Google that tells you what the location is. With odometer. So they're going to fix our mileage. Our mileage was 264, 469. 264 469 right. 694 that's it you click save and get out of it you can see all my fuel receipts down through there and when I entered them that's not necessarily when I got fuel August 17th, 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 23rd, 23rd, 30th, 1st, 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 1st. So that's not actually when I uh, got the fuel, it's just when I've entered it in. I don't know if you're supposed to put when you got it, but none of these receipts, well, yeah, they do up there, I guess. I guess I could change it and do it the day I got it, but. <coughs> You'll, you'll pay the if though on it whether you enter it today you got it or not so but that's what i'm sitting here doing i just got done watching the ball game and uh about three more receipts to enter and then one off my phone from pilot where i did mobile fueling and we're gonna watch some tv so i'll get back with you guys later